Yeah, you're right, guys. And Dick was upset that Ian was going to take all of his time. He was worried because that forecast was getting extended a little bit too long. But really, this is your night, Dick Jankowski, who is only the second PA announcer in the history of this building. That's a pretty uh, incredible accomplishment. Uh, Jim, thank you very much. I, You know, that's one of the things that I guess, out of all the years I've been here, 31, I guess one of the, the most... I guess gratifying thing for me is the fact to know that there's only been two of us in the history of this building. You know, they can never take that away from me. And Julie Pearl, who was outstanding, 58 years, and I'd be here 31, and the building's almost 90 years old. What is the key to your success, to be a quality PA announcer? Because you're entertaining, but you don't take away from the game. I don't know. I, I've always, you know, as a kid, I didn't really think too much about being a public address announcer. I was a Boy Scout usher here at Williams Arena and at Memorial Stadium, and I used to listen to Julie Pearl. Did not listen to a lot of guys. Dick Henroth was a good PA announcer in the old days of the WCCO radio, and there have been others that I've kind of patterned by. Bob Casey was a little different, sure. but he was great for 44 years. It's just a little. You try to. I try to excite the crowd somewhat, although a lot of times you don't have to do that here at Williams Arena, <laughs> just to try to give the facts and, and make people happy. And, and look for times if I can throw in a one-liner or two. I know, you know, over the years, uh, I had three names that I liked saying, Jim Shikajansky, Ernest and Zygabasabo, and <laughs> Jamal Abushamala. And I love those three names. And I remember one of my favorite things I ever did, we had Quincy Lewis and a guy by the name of Clark, Kevin Clark on the team, and they went in at the same time. I know where Lewis, you're going. Lewis and Clark in for Minnesota. <laughs> things like that I tried, and the fans usually catch on. All right, uh, you worked with so many coaches, now with Richard Patino. How has he been to work with? Richard Patino, at first, the first year didn't say much to me. And then I, you know, developed cancer the second year, and he was very, very gracious. He'd come over almost every game and ask how I was doing and so forth. And we got along fine. And then the last year we talked quite a bit. And this year I, I introduced him at a banquet. And I said, uh, I, I talked, I, he never heard me speak. Okay. And I got up and I said, well, uh, your dad, of course, is uh, Richard, Rick, Rick Patino, one of the great coaches and he's known as the Italian Stallion and I said I if you don't mind I'd like to call you the pepperoni pony and I said as far as I'm concerned this year I think you have the horses <laughs> that's great all right so the game ends tonight you have that microphone in your hand one last time do you know what you'll say yet you know I I, I get choked up easy I'm a very emotional guy I'm gonna try not to but I yeah I'll just thank all the fans that have been so great over the years and, in the, and the players who come back every year, they, the alumni day are so great. So they always come and say hello. And this year's team has been really great to me. They really have. I'm just going to thank everybody, and I'll stay in the arena. I bet I don't leave until about 1 a.m. I'll be the last one to leave, I promise you. All right, Dick. Well, congratulations you, on a wonderful career. Thank you so much for taking some time to be with us tonight, and enjoy the evening. Thanks for, thanks for asking me, really. Thank All you. Right. All right, that's it from here. We throw it back to you guys. We'll have much more on tonight's game coming up at 6.